and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft 101. In this episode, we are going to be playing around with all of the different breeding mechanics for the four main types of livestock that you can have in Minecraft, chickens, pigs, cows, and sheep. We're also going to be looking at how to set up a villager breeder. So before we get started, I want to go ahead and address the elephant in the room, and that is the fact that I have not posted in probably about two months now. Um, things have been kind of crazy in my real life. I have been working off camera a bit, and I'll show you some of that stuff. Um, I do have a farm here. I've also started building a base off in the distance there. So as I ramble, I'm going to be heading down through the nether to get over there. Um, so as I said, things have been kind of crazy in real life. I'm a teacher. Dealing with the end of year, especially with COVID, was just insane. Immediately after that, we had to move because our lease was up, so we're now renting a house instead of an apartment, which is honestly a huge upgrade, and I love it, but it was a lot of stress. Um, and now that that's done, we're getting ready to go to New Jersey for my brother's wedding in like a week. So um, things have been kind of crazy. Um, I actually went ahead and recorded this entire video, but I went to edit all of the clips and the audio was garbage. So I decided to just go ahead and delete everything and restart. Um, as you can see from the mobs that are in here, we are in the 1.16 nether. Um, I went ahead and updated the entire nether. Um, if you're curious how to do that, all you have to go do is go into your world saves and delete the folder titled dimension-1 or dimension minus one. That is the nether dimension. When you delete that, everything in your nether will be gone. So just be careful, be aware, everything in your nether will be gone. Um, all of the nether terrain will regenerate when you go back in using the new 1.16 nether generation. Um, so through this portal is the new area. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a screenshot, a screenshot up of what the area looked like before I started building and I'm going to kind of talk you through what I was thinking. So I found this area when I went into a copy of the world in creative and just kind of flew around trying to find some inspiration and I found this really nice cliffside overlooking the water and I just had this image in my head of having a um, kind of modern style um, house hanging off the cliff. So with that in mind I decided to um, kind of move myself into this area and I wasn't quite ready as far as resources for building that so I decided to make kind of an in-between base and I looked just over the um, back side of the cliff and found this nice valley um, so I went ahead and ripped out one of the mountains and kind of redesigned the entire area to put in this valley and I'm sorry you're hearing chest trying to find a bed but Oh well. Um, so this is what the valley looks like now. I went ahead and ripped out that whole hill that was right here. In doing all of this um, terraforming, I have, at one point in time, all these chests were filled up with dirt. All these chests in the middle here are filled up with cobblestone. I cannot even, can't even imagine how many picks I must have burned through. I burned, I used up pretty much all my diamonds on picks. Um, I enchanted them, combined them, trying to get through everything. It was just a lot. So as you can see over here, I have a pig pen. Um, it's not quite done yet. The cow pen is the one that's most finished. I've got some nice hay bales in there, some grass, some flowers, just fun stuff. I have a sheep pen over here. I have a chicken pen. And then in here, we actually have our villager breeder. And I'm going to show you how to make that in a little bit. Um, this lake right here did not exist, nor did that waterfall, and actually hiding behind that waterfall, oh, a cat, I need to get some fish, um, hiding behind that waterfall is my nether portal. I also, in building this, decided to make myself a little house. Um, with 1.16 coming, I knew that the um, wall textures were going to start actually behaving like walls, so I decided to build this house using that wall texture to kind of give it some depth. I'm really loving the way that it connects with the window panes, the glass panes. The one downside of building like this is the door. Doors don't work right. 
you see here it connects, and then it doesn't, and then it connects, and then it doesn't. And no matter how you place the door, it just is awful. So yeah, that's the big downside is the fact that doors don't work with walls very well. I kind of hope that they'll figure out how to make that work in the future, but it is what it is. Okay, so I think I'm done rambling for now. Um, and yeah, we can probably get into the meat and potatoes of the episode, which is um, breeding and raising livestock. So um, first and foremost, the different each animal has its own food source that it pref or it uses to be bred. Um, chickens need seeds. That would be just the plain old um, wheat seeds that you can get by punching grass. Perfect example. You need two seeds at least and two chickens. You can give each chicken a seed and they will breed. Also, if you happen to just find a whole bunch of eggs lying around, which will happen if you um, leave some chickens out near your house, just don't kill them. They'll eventually start dropping eggs. And if I remember correctly, it's like a one in four chance of an egg hatching. And of course, I got a terrible luck of an egg hatching into a baby chick. You can also use seeds to speed up the growth of chickens, um, but I never bother wasting my seeds with that. Um, as you can see here, a couple got out. Um, cows. To breed cows, you're going to need wheat. Again, same thing. To cows with wheat, they hang out together and they make a baby. You also get some experience when you do um, breeding with the animals, but it's not really a significant amount of experience. Um, sheep are just like cows. They also like wheat. And pigs need carrots. Apparently I didn't bother stocking those with carrots. Um, so you could do that and just keep breeding up your animals and slaughtering them as your population gets too big. But I personally wanted to go a more mechanized route. So as you see here, I've got some cows in this little one by one trap. Over time, I haven't really bred them up enough. Over time, there will become too many in that space and they will start to kill each other off using a mechanic known as entity cramming. Essentially in a single block, in a single block, you can have no more than 24 or 25 mobs. When you start to get more than that many entities, they start to die. So you can use that for automated farming, uh, automated mob farming. You can use it for um, animal farming like I am. One of the side notes is that when you have adult animals and baby animals in that space, the ones that will die will always be the adults. So you can make sure that you always get the drops if only adults are dying. So I'm going to go ahead and save and quit, and we're going to look at the redstone behind it in my testing world. So it took a couple of iterations for me to get this right. Um, I can't remember where I saw this design, but it's honestly just so simple. Um, so here we have, I'm using glass so you can see, I've got a whole bunch of pigs inside of this space. They are floating on water. That way um, it's easier to feed them because they'll all be bobbing up and down at different times. This fence post up here is just to keep the player from falling in with the pigs. Because if you're in survival and you, well, they're not letting me fall in, but if you fall in, then you can't get out because that's kind of the point when you got the pigs there is you want them trapped. Um, so I put a fence post over top. That way you can still interact with them and feed them, but they will not, um, they will, or you will not fall in. So I've got some carrots here to demonstrate. I'm just gonna feed them. And you should be able to see, there, a couple of them are dying. Um, those drops fall into this hopper. The hopper spits them into this chest. Now that's great if you want the redstone up and visible, but I didn't. I wanted to hide it underground, so I needed to have some way of taking the drops from this chest and pushing them up to ground level. So this is the design that I have settled on. Let me get some wheat. It would help if I could spell. 
So here I'm breeding up cows. Some of them are dying, their drops are going down and into this hopper. Inside this hopper, or in front of this hopper, we have a um, auto clock, or an auto dropper clock. Um, this comparator looks to see if there's anything in there. If there is, it spits out a redstone signal here, which then powers this block, which powers this comparator. But because this one is on subtract, what it is doing is comparing this maximum signal strength coming from this comparator to this very small signal strength coming here. And since they're different, it's shutting off the redstone signal. So if I, let me just get some beef. So it will just keep flashing on and off and on and off and on and off. This observer is looking at this redstone dust and seeing that it's turning on and turning off. So this redstone, or this observer, is powering on and off, on and off, on and off. This one is watching that one, also flickering. This one's watching the one below, flickering. This one is watching that one, flickering, and powering these three droppers all at once to send the items up. And it's kind of a benefit that one, when you do have a good number of items here, it becomes silent. Um, when you just have a few, the first one you do start to hear some clicking noise because it does try to signal all these dispensers multiple times. But that is the mechanic behind the breeding. So it's really just a matter of making sure that you've got a farm that provides you with the carrots and wheat that you need. Uh, wheat for the cows and for the sheep and carrots for the pigs. Um, also the um, seeds for the chickens. Now what I have over here is a automatic chicken grinder. This one I'm probably not going to build just because it requires a lot of entities and that can cause some lag, but I did want to showcase it a little bit. So what we have here is a cell with a whole bunch of chickens in it that are on top of hoppers so that any eggs that they lay will go down into the hoppers and those hoppers will put the eggs into this dispenser. It needs to be a dispenser, not a dropper. I'm using the same kind of um, the same kind of auto dispenser clock that I was using over with the cows, but this time, instead of um, there we just saw it go. Um, this time I have this piece of redstone dust up here. That way it powers this block which powers the dispenser, causing it to spit out the eggs. And as you can see here, baby chickens are half a block tall. So they're just sitting underneath the lava perfectly fine. But once they grow up, they will, um, their heads will get into the lava and their drops will end up down here. Um, using lava here because it will automatically cook their, the raw chicken into cooked chicken. Um, the downside of this is if you do over fill with um, chickens up here, not only will it cause lag, it will actually break the way that the farm works um, because you'll be putting too many eggs into the dropper or into the dispenser here, which means there will be too many baby chicks here. And when entity cramming starts, when you do get an adult chicken form, it might die due to entity cramming instead of due to the lava. If it dies from entity cramming, then the drops would only be the raw chicken, and also the drops have a chance of burning up in the lava. So don't can't go too crazy on the chickens up here. So I'm going to hop into the, uh, the real world, the real Minecraft 101 world, and try to build this up on camera. I'm going to uh, go ahead and say right now it's been a couple weeks since I built this, so it might go horribly, horribly wrong. So if I remember correctly, I need to build one for the pigs still. So I've got one for the cows. You can see there are cows right there. Um, it would help if I had my redstone supplies. I need droppers. I need redstone. I think the rest of them might be in the house. Um, anyways, I'm rambling a lot, and I apologize for that. But I've, with the whole lockdown thing and quarantine, I'm 
kind of not good at talking anymore. So I kind of using this as an excuse to just talk some more and hopefully that will help me when it comes time to, you know, go back to work and resume life as normal. Um, I don't think I need anything else there. I might want to grab a fence. There we go. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is the dropper system. So I've got a um, whole bunch of droppers here. They all need to be facing up and into a chest. So I've got the chest already, and I just need three droppers. Let me use the iron pickaxe. So holding shift will, if I try to right click and place the block on the dropper, it doesn't actually place because it interacts with the interface, so I need to hold shift to make that happen. Um, where's that dirt? That dirt goes there. And now I can go underneath. And I know I'm punching dirt. Very inefficient, but you know, gotta make do with what you got. So there are my droppers, which means I'm just gonna go ahead and seal myself in real quick because I don't want to have to worry about creepers exploding. Oh, that was waste of redstone. Ignore that. I was trying to do something and I derped really bad on it. Okay, so I'm going to need some hoppers running into there. I'm going to need my redstone comparator coming out on subtract mode. It needs to go into a solid block with redstone behind stone behind it. Okay. That should be enough space. I also want uh, a block there, another comparator here, this time on regular not subtract mode, and there we go. So now when I put an item in there it should just flash. Perfect. Now I need to do the observers, which means I need an observer. Always takes me a second to remember which way. You want to place the observer so that you're looking at the thing you want the observer to look at. And then I want to look at that observer, which I didn't. that observer, and then I want to look at that observer. There we go. That should be it for the auto dropper. Let me just color up so I can make sure that that item ended up in the chest, and it did. So then it's just a matter of taking out that block there, putting in some cobble, putting in, we got there, no, I need to put it one back, um, putting in a water bucket, cobblestone there, and now I should be good to get out of here. the spot where my pigs are hiding. So I just need to get a couple pigs in there, and that will be that. Um, of course, in order to get them in there, I need some carrots, but anyways. So that's how you put together the, um, the I guess, kill chamber is the best way to put it, for those kind of um, animal farms. Again, you don't have to do that. Um, you can just breed them up and kill them off, kind of old school style, but I kind of enjoy the, the technical part of putting together that little farm and, you know, you don't have to have 
a large um, field full of cows anymore, or a large field full of pigs. You can just kind of um, have this very small footprint and use that to breed up a whole bunch of um, animals and get a whole bunch of food. Um, now with 1.16 there are other ways to get food um, using the hoglands and probably in another episode we're going to be doing a whole bunch of nether exploration so um, I'm going to try breeding together some babies and maybe that'll make my life a little easier because babies have a smaller hitbox I think come on baby anyways I'm going to fiddle around with these pigs and I'll get back to you when we're ready for the second part of this episode which is going to be villagers and we are back so as you can see I'm back in the testing world uh, I just thought it would be easier to look at the villager breeder in here than in the um, survival world so what I've got here is a very small carrot farm it can be carrots or potatoes um, I don't recommend using wheat uh, with a farmer villager um, this is his workstation here at the composter he is harvesting the crops, and as his inventory fills up, he will start throwing carrots at these two guys. These two villagers, they're un they could have a job, but I decided to leave them unemployed. Don't really need them for trading, just need them to breed. Um, the way that trading mechanics work is, or sorry, breeding mechanics work, if you have two villagers that have extra food, they become what's known as willing. And if there are extra beds nearby, they will produce a baby. The baby villager will has a smaller hitbox, so he will actually fall down past these, um, what are they called, fences, down into this water stream where they will get taken away and carried down here. As you can see, I've got a baby villager. Um, you typically want to take the babies uh, decent distance away. You could drop them vertically much further. I can't do it in this world because it's a flat world. Um, but you just want to get them away from the beds so they don't claim any of the beds and kind of break the farm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how this works. So I'm going to pop over into the survival world and show you what I put together in here. So my villager breeder is in this unfinished building here. I'm not really sure how I want to finish designing it. Um, but I just built that exact same um, structure right here. I didn't cover it all with glass because I was kind of running out of glass. And also I just felt like doing a weird pattern. Um, it's important to have these trap doors here. You want um, two levels of trap doors. That way this farmer cannot get into the beds but he can throw carrots, or in this case, I'm actually using potatoes to these two villagers here. Um, there's an iron golem here because apparently I didn't, um, during the time it took me to build this, these guys right here must have seen a zombie and freaked out and spawned in a iron golem. We're gonna be taking advantage of that in another episode to build an iron golem farm. And then down here is where my water stream, you can barely make it out there. That's where my water stream lets out, and I've got a, probably about 15 villagers under here. Um, anyways, this villager breeder is really easy to build. I would recommend if you want to try building it yourself, go back to when I was looking in the um, survival world, not survival, creative testing world, and just pause and take a screenshot there. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. I know it the first um, chunk was kind of long. I did ramble on a lot about, you know, life updates and all that, but it's been a while. I thought an update was worth it. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and I'll catch you all later.